Mm -hmm. I'd like to call to order the Board of Supervisors meeting for the wonderful town of Sevastopol at 7 p.m. on January 16th. If you'd join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, I'd appreciate it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Let's start with a roll call to see if we have a quorum. Amy? Supervisor Mark Hain? Here. Supervisor Linda Wade? Here. Chairman Dan Wolfel? Here. Supervisor Derek Daniel? Here. Supervisor Jeannie Vogel? Here. All right, looks like we're good to go. Meet and greet. If you don't mind introducing yourself, we'd appreciate it. We'd let you start first. Attorney Bjorn Johnson, I represent the property owners at 4248 Glen Drive. Thank you. Uh, Brad Reimer with Mountain Associates. I represent the Door County uh, Child Development Center. I'm Gordon Rowe. Okay. Jean Nelson, 4339 Glen Drive. Steve Murray, 4124 Glen Drive. Uh, you can settle uh, 3986 Glen Drive, uh, uh, Supervisor of District 14. Jeff and Steve Wood, 5799 Gordon Road. Carrie Nellis, 4216 Sedhammer, 57. Greg Nellis, 4216 Sebastopol. You know, I usually start my meetings based on when you're here. You guys are like a minute late, so <laughs> it's okay. Welcome all, thank you for well, oh, two more Derek. coming. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to miss the boys. <laughs> Derek to me, um, Country View Road. Maggie Chapman, Glidden Drive. All right, good. All accounted for. All right, public participation. Anyone here wishing to speak on anything not on the agenda? Okay. And then let's see. I assume our agenda was properly noticed. Amy? The agenda was properly noticed. And then we would need a motion to adopt. I'll make a motion to adopt agenda. Motion by Jeannie, second by? Second. Second by Derek. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, you have in front of the Board of Supervisors meeting from December 19th. You should all have had an opportunity to look at that. Unless you have some comments, a motion to approve would be in order. I'll move to uh, approve the minutes of December 19th, 2022 and place on file. Motion by Linda. Second by? Second. Jeannie. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Pending business. Uh, the first thing on our agenda this evening is a discussion regarding the short-term rental agreement that has been reached with the owners of the property on Glen Drive. Uh, I don't really hope to go into too much detail as this agreement is five or six pages. I just do not read it all. But let me just kind of summarize, if I can, the issues were uh, a number of complaints that <clears throat> came back through the town and also through Granicus regarding overpopulation of or over occupancy of the dwelling on a number of different occasions, which resulted in these numerous complaints, as, as well as many other numerous issues, some which were um, absolutely covered by ordinance, some maybe gray area, I think maybe, um, at any rate, we'll leave it at that. Uh, the occupancy was the biggest issue. <clears throat> the owners have since uh, upgraded their septic system to, rem to remedy the situation. Um, there was a, a lot of discussion with respect to the occupancy of the dwelling and the fact that at numerous times it was over-occupied, there were more vehicles there. <clears throat> than Clearly, there was, unfortunately, a, an abuse of the ordinance in terms of what was happening. We worked with our town attorney, as well as Bjorn, uh, representing the owners um, to deal with, uh, basically what we agreed to do is to uh, fine them a substantial amount of money, as well as attorney fees. And our two, the two attorneys worked out a settlement agreement which we will vote on this evening. The board has a copy of that. But we believe will address the concerns that the public has as well as those that we have at, at the town. And as these things seem to um, 
have their own legs and word gets out about what happens in these situations, it becomes more public. Uh, I think it'll probably set the stage for anyone else that might be thinking of not complying with our ordinance that we're going to take a very difficult and tough stance on these types of issues in the future. We're glad that they were able to agree to a settlement. I don't think either one of us wanted to take this to court. Our objective was to resolve the problem, which I believe the agreement has done. They were transparent and proactive in remedying it. From our perspective, uh, they have agreed uh, to the conditions of the fine. And basically that, I would say, summarizes uh, where we're at. The board has this agreement. Uh, they've had an opportunity to read it. So if there's questions or concerns from you, this would be the opportunity to discuss them. And then if there's any comments from the public or their attorney, <coughs> if they would like, we will give them an opportunity to, to speak as well. If you'd like to start, uh, sure. that'd be fine. Yeah. I have uh, signed copies of my client's signature page for everyone. Oh. And then also attached to that is a quick claim deed that I signed and notarized for them yesterday, which is on its way to the register of deeds, which is transferring ownership of the property to their LLC. So that's just for the record. Thanks, and it's for the benefit of the public. There were issues with multiple ownership and the LLCs, et cetera, and some confusion as to who, what, where, and how. So they've cleaned that matter up as well. So we, we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, comments from the board? I'll just, you know, in light of the complaints and the violations, uh, I also am glad that uh, legal counsel was able to come up with this settlement agreement. I think it's reasonable, and I think it's justifiable as well, so. Okay, good. Anyone else? Anyone from the public wishing to speak regarding this? Jean? Jean Elston, Flynn Drive. I don't know the settlement, so I can't say if I'm satisfied with it. I would hope that I could, if you approve the settlement, I can get a copy of it. Yes. The main concern that I hear from my neighbors is that when there is a problem with the short-term rental, the only remedy at the moment is calling grandpas. The party still goes on, and in this case, I sent the complaint to grandpas because there was a wedding scheduled at the property, and there were bridesmaids there and caterers. And uh, they were using a, another shuttle service to shuttle people in, but yet there were cars parked on both sides of the driveway, uh, of, on the street in front of the property, and if an emergency vehicle needed to get through, it would have been difficult. So the problem I hear from the neighbors is, okay, I call Granicus and they say, oh, we're sorry, is it still going on? At the time, we have no remedy. If you call the sheriff, the sheriff says, they're having a party. There's nothing I can do about it. So the, the, the neighbors feel frustrated, and I think that's just my point to tell you is that we don't know what to do after we call rent because it's all fine, but like I said, the party goes on. Go ahead. Uh, you should have, all of the neighbors within 200 feet of the property should have been provided with notice with either the owner's name and address and phone number and email or their respective agent's name, address, phone number, email. And if there is a complaint, that person is supposed to be available, I believe, 24 hours, seven days a week. So if you want to pass that along, Gene, to the neighbors, if they did not receive an informational sheet with all of the requirements per our ordinance, they need to, um, they could probably call Amy at the office and you would send out something to the owner saying Absolutely. you need to comply. So if that helps a little bit, Jean. That, that, it actually does not. Because so, this, this person did have an, <clears throat> one of my neighbors will not call grandmas, okay? Okay. They, they, they did contact me and they had an issue where um, Sometime in September, 
there was a RV parked in the parking lot with the, with the camper thing up, mm -hmm. and people were camped there along with using the short-term rental. He called the agent mm -hmm. whose name he had, and we know by now that the agent did not live within 75 miles. 75 miles. The agent said, oh, they'll be gone in two days, don't worry. So where do you go from there? Why would the neighbor go one step further when he's done all he can do? Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we find frustrating because if there's another wedding at this property, what do we do? Right. We call Veronica's, they call the agent, oh, we're sorry. Mm -hmm. That's well, what we've heard. At least it's documented because when it comes time to renew the renew these SDR permits and there are complaints and violations on file, unless the neighbors or whoever, unless you register that complaint, we have nothing to rely on and to, you know, for feedback for us and to document because obviously if there are repeated violations and complaints, uh, we're going to take a look at that license. But it has to be documented. We have to know that there's complaints out there. So even though you didn't get satisfaction, please urge your neighbors to document it with Graticus. You can either call them or email them. Or even if you want to copy Amy on that at the office so that we have a record and, you know, repeat offenders are, they're going to get a response. So. I mean, unfortunately, let me just add, unfortunately, we all know we do not have uh, a constable, sheriff, whatever at our disposal, which is the logical next step that you take in this situation. But you hope that through word of mouth of the actions that we've taken tonight, as well as the comments that Linda made relative to the fact that we do not have to renew their license or we have the ability to revoke or suspend, which was a topic of discussion with the individual in question, but um, that these things would decrease significantly. And there is going to be an effort for us to do a little fine-tuning of our ordinance. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but to deal with some of the issues that we as well share with the community. So, Steve? To Linda's point, which is well taken, uh, part of the concern is some of these neighbors like to live in harmony with those around them, and I, and I get it. You know, we're, we're here for the long term. We want to get along, so some people are willing to raise their hand and reach out to Granicus, and some are. And I read a whole series of emails about uh, one of the neighbors uh, trying to comply with what Linda said and was aware of the property manager who to contact, and it was essentially fell on deaf ears. It was just given uh, whitewash. You know, they'll be gone eventually, they'll be gone on Monday, they'll be gone on Sunday, they'll be gone on right. Tuesday. And it's just like let their whatever the rental was run out. And, and so really that, that that's a nice gesture to say we'll make everybody aware of who the owners are and who the property managers are. But at least in this case, um, there's no teeth in it for them to really do what, what you would hope they would do is intervene. And so you know, you're, you're over your limit, your, your house is rated for four people. You've got 14. You, you know, if you were a, a, a hotel down the street or a motel, mm -hmm. you, the police would come and take you out. You'd be evicted that night. And in this case, yep. you're not. It just goes on. Okay. And so that level of intervention, you call the fire department. Because now this is an assembly. You, you know, are your doors swinging in or are they swinging out? Are, are your doors lighted with exercise? I hear you, but getting 50 to 100 people inside a home. At this time, we don't have a solution. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, 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 I mean, I appreciate the frustration. I understand the issue. I, as a, as a town chairman and a neighbor, I would hate to tell you how many complaints I get about fireworks uh, at the wrong time of the year and for all the wrong reasons. And I mean, yeah, in that case, I could call the sheriff, but with the other 35 calls that are out there, you know, when he shows up, the fireworks are gone, and it's August. So it's one of the things that unfortunately we end up having to deal with. If we have an avenue in the future to fix it, we, we can, we will. Can I make another comment sure. to that too, Steve and Jean? Um, we're still sort of on the learning curve. So as we move along here, we're going to, you know, instances are gonna come up that we need to address. Uh, I and the plan commission, we're making a list. Um, you know, making a list, checking it twice because I can foresee amending our current ordinance to address camping parties and actually if they're listed with airbnb or vrbo they are not supposed to be having events at all 
uh, we'll call them assemblies, zoning would call them assemblies. Um, so like I said, we're making a list, um, and that's a good point that agent must respond, you know. So yes, we have in our ordinance that you need to have an agent, but I think we would need to put some teeth in there and say must respond, you know. So. One, one final concern is at this place, what about campfires? Mm -hmm. Are campfires in your ordinance? As long as they got a marsh bell somewhere in the house. Okay, well, we know that this one instance that yeah. someone was being sent down to start a bonfire down at the property, campfire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. as neighbors, you know, we're, we're invested in it, our homes are here, we have some, some concerns that we would like beefed up in the new ordinance. And campfires, yeah. by the way, a, a legitimate concern, obviously, where we all live, but, you know, that's kind of thing where you pick up phone and call the fire department. And they will, they will respond. Right. So, okay. I mean, that is not an issue, and we've talked to the fire chief. They're very supportive. So if there's, if there's that kind of issue, just pick up the phone and call. Tell them what's up. They'll send a truck out. If it shouldn't be there, they'll put it out. So we shouldn't lose any sleep over that. Um, and another, the, the settlement agreement is for um, complaints and concerns and violations through December 31st of 2022. So that's, it's just for last year. So we're starting a new year now. You. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, uh, Hughes Edel 3986 uh, Glidden Drive, also District 14 Supervisors. Um, uh, Steve and Jean are, are my constituents. I also serve on the Resource Planning Commission of which uh, ordinances are, are there were, since we're under comprehensive zoning. Um, I've already notified them, because this has been a discussion, both the, the, the septic um, issue, which was talked about with the sanitarian during the discussion, um, as well as uh, concern about assembly. Um, and, and really, uh, the, the feedback at that meeting was that it really was a violation of, a, of an existing county ordinance. So I would urge uh, the town to make sure that uh, the town council provides correspondence uh, to corporate counsel, uh, Sean Donahue at the, at the mm -hmm. county, uh, to make him aware of that and also copy uh, Mariah Good, uh, who is uh, the land use manager, so that we can address those. There are a number of policy matters, um, relative, whether it's parking, whether it's POUTS compliance, um, whether it's the, the clarification of assembly. No one anticipated in the comprehensive ordinance about assembly when a lot of that ordinance was done is when we had the challenge with uh, wedding barns, as, as folks recall, and how that gets managed properly. No one anticipated that a short-term rental would be used as a venue for, for hosting a 50-plus person wedding. And so um, it's really ab abuse of property, it's abuse of zoning, um, and we, you have to make sure, please, to notify them of, of uh, what was um, identified uh, in this matter uh, so that we can make sure that we work with the county to adjust the ordinances as possible uh, and, and again, make it easier for us as a town to enforce and uh, make sure we're meeting the expectation of our residents. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and that last and final FYI here is that the owners of this dwelling are going to become permanent residents on Glidden Drive. They have a home under construction currently. Forever. So if you can't find the agent within 75 miles and I can give you the address, you could go say hello. But that's not the object. But we'll try and work that from our end. So um, any other comments from the board on the settlement? If not, a motion to approve would be in order. I'll move to um, accept and approve the settlement agreement as presented to us this evening. We have a motion by Linda, second by second, second by Jeannie, to approve the settlement agreement between us and the short-term rental owners. And I believe everything is in order on this. We have the signatures. Um, they are going to supply us with an updated parking, I believe, part of the. Yeah, document. it should have been attached to this exhibit. Okay. I have drafts and redrafts, but it's, if not, we'll, you'll give us one. Let's okay. Yeah, I can, I can All right, that's fine. 
So we have a motion from Linda, second by Jeannie, to approve the settlement agreement. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Shower road discussion. Um, thank you. This is uh, something that we talked about at a couple different meetings. And the most recent meeting that we had, the proposal, well, let me back up. The original proposal we had was to try and in, in widen the road going into Cape Point County Park. Uh, and that was the way that we were pursuing uh, our effort with the DNR to try and get the necessary approvals to do that and for, for them to allow us to expand our right away to a standard road right away. <clears throat> During a, a joint meeting of the people from the county, Thad Ash, Ken Pavich, the DNR representatives, um, I think there was representatives from both of our supervisors from the county, et cetera. In that conversation, it was a proposal that <clears throat> we look at taking and creating a new road off of the existing road about halfway in and take and create a straight line to the parking lot at Cape Point Park, taking the remainder of the road that was there and deeding it back to the Wisconsin DNR, and they would in turn take and create a walking trail along the shoreline rather than the people, than what our people are taking today. <clears throat> anyway, the idea had a lot of enthusiasm, especially from the DNR, which I, uh, was actually a pleasant experience. Um, but it didn't go anywhere for a long period of time. And uh, so we kind of kept at it. And as recently as last week, we were finally given an update in terms of what's up, uh, in terms of what are the requirements from the, from the state, what things we have to do with the DNR, for example, getting an update to their master plan to make changes, et cetera, as well as a number of determinations that have to be made on uh, potential burial grounds and protected species, so on and so forth. So the gist of it is that we're gonna have a follow-up meeting on the 26th of January, and I won't be able to attend, but Linda's gonna fill in for me, to try and assign duties and break this out so that we can get more people involved and get some momentum on this project and get it going. And obviously, there's a number of reasons we want to do it. Safety is one thing, because that is an issue with people going off over the sides of the road, having uh, people on bicycles you know, nearly get clipped and so on and so forth. The other aspect of it, that it comes into play, and another reason for us to try and step up the uh, effort to get the DNR or the state to move ahead is as a result of the Community Investment Fund. We talked about that a little bit better, or a little bit before, but now the, the fund and the details have, uh, have really started to come forward and people are getting a better understanding of just how many dollars are in this. And there's over a million dollars available this year um, in this Community Investment Fund, which is gonna be managed by the Door County Foundation. And there will be four different opportunities for us or for others in the county to apply for grant funding. And according to everything that I've read, and I think, Linda, you attended a yes. Zoom or in-person presentation. In-person with Brett Bicoy, yes. This project uh, really seems to hit the nail on the head. <coughs> and so we're hopeful that we can garner some dollars out of it. And we want the state to get rolling before somebody else gets to the pile of cash, so to speak. So um, I just want to give you an update on where that is. I can't foresee us actually accomplishing anything in terms of construction this year, but it would be great if we could get to the point where we could get a commitment, resolve it, and put it on the schedule for 2024. Um, Linda, you want to talk a little bit about the, your meeting on the Community Investment Fund? If not, um, it's up to you. Yes, uh, just for general <coughs> information, the main point that Brett Bicoy, who is the director of the Door Community Foundation, made was in order to qualify for these funds, um, it has to significantly be used by transient tourists, that means paid tourists, um, and likely to generate a paid overnight stay. And in my mind, Cave Point Park is the most visited place in all of Door County. I mean, if you're coming to Door County and you miss Cave Point, um, you need to come back again. So uh, that was, that's what was what he stressed. 
um, the destination Door County, so these are, I'll call them excess funds from destination Door County. In their 2023 budget, they allocated $1 million, and I believe there's 865000 in there from the previous year. So um, they plan to make four distributions a year, quarterly. They were kind of vague on the amount. So the amount could be anywhere from, you know, as little as $10,000 to someone asked the question if, if you could possibly get the entire pot. And he did not say no to that, but he didn't say yes either. So that's the main gist of it. Um, they'll be easy to work with. I did um, print out the application and the information, but they suggested that someone sit down with the community foundation people, present the plan, they'll kind of guide you through the application, okay, include this and you know stress these points or whatever. So um, the simplest grant is tangible municipal development, such as sand, uh, you know, sand for beaches or trails or equipment, something again that you can touch and hold and obviously a road is something that you, is very tangible so i think we would be a good candidate for that so. well our project would cross you know check the box for county involvement the town of Sarasville, right. and mm -hmm. it would impact the town of jackson port as well as the, as well as tourism in general so i i agree with you i think yeah. it's if we can get the dnr rolling i think we have an opportunity to to maybe fund some of this okay. so and the partnership aspect too like you said all of those entities um plus it is a tourist attraction so um that's Good. where that stands right now thank you linda so let's uh as long as linda's on a roll here let's keep her going <clears throat> we'll talk about <laughs> one of the main reasons we're here tonight is for a discussion on the conditional use permit for the Door County Community Child Development Center, which is most of you all know is on Gordon Road, right behind, or right near Culver's. Uh, we have uh, a couple people here this evening that would like to talk to that in addition to Linda. Uh, just as an FYI, um, what, 60 days ago, this came before this board for recommendation on a rezone for that property. And we did support the rezone, which was subsequently approved by the county last month, was it? Few, do you recall? Yes, Two months ago. Okay, time flies when you're having fun. So, Linda, you want to lead the discussion on that? Well, Hugh was kind enough to chair our meeting for me on uh, last Tuesday, oh, right. January 10th. But I'll, I'll recap as much as I can. Hugh, if I miss something, just let me know. Um, so, again, we had Mr. Reimer there on behalf of the Child Care Center. Uh, I believe Alexis Fuller, uh, the Fullers were here, and there was another um, gal, I don't remember her name, Cole Myra from Keller um, Buildings. I believe he's on the phone with us. Thank you, Cole. Um, here representing the building aspect of it. So the Plan Commission, just like the Town Board, received the entire packet from Door County Land Use uh, on their conditional use permit. As our chairman mentioned, yes, we had already approved and it has been granted uh, their commercial zoning for this piece of property. I believe it was 16 acres, six acres. Anyway, whatever, wherever the building and the parking lot is going to be. So, um, and there would be two entrance, entrances. I believe you see that on the, draw, on the drawings. We have a very nice uh, photograph or uh, proposal of what the building would look like. We all agreed at the Plan Commission, we agreed. Thank you, Attorney Johnson. Um, we all agreed it was very pleasing looking, would fit in. Uh, it was the unanimous recommendation of our Plan Commission to support the request for the conditional use permit. Uh, the reasons for our decision was that uh, there is definitely a need for additional child care services in our area. Uh, that the use of the parcel now would be consistent with the current zoning commercial, that the building was is aesthetically pleasing and appropriate for that area. Um, there were some, is the proposal consistent with the town's comprehensive plan? Yes, it is close to or adjacent to existing um, commercial uses in that area. And we also like the idea that they were preserving trails through the 
the undeveloped portion of the countryside parcel. Um, some of the current concerns were um, one of the neighbors across the street had raised a concern. They did not have an objection to the project, but they did have a concern as to lighting, and hopefully this would be downward lighting, um, you know, because they like the dark skies and there wouldn't be light trespass. And that is usually addressed at the county level um, from the county zoning aspect. So I don't think we would need to worry about that. Uh, we also talked about possibly timers to turn them off at night so there wasn't constant light. Um, and then uh, the Woods, Jeff, Jeff and Steve Woods, they're here tonight if they want to add additional comments. So the Wood Orchard is an adjacent property on the child care development property. Our, our couple dozen dead apple trees, was it more than 40? I think you said 40. More than 40. More than 40. Um, that it would be nice if those could be removed because old apple trees attract pests and insects, which means that an operating orchard may have to use more pesticide on their side to avoid those insects and pests. Maybe Steve or Jeff could explain that a little bit better. And it seemed that the owners would were conducive to working with, with, um, with them on getting those trees removed. So other than that, um, we fully supported their request. I don't know if you had anything to add to that. Uh, Jeff Wood, 5799 Gordon Road. Don't, I think your summary was very well of our position there, so. All right, thank you. If you have any questions, we'll be glad to answer. Were those your trees? No, the ones on that property were not in our, no. Ours are right next to them. I don't know if you had anything to add, I think. It's no, okay. Hugh, do you have anything to add? No, we're good. He's good to go. Um, Oh, um, the driveways, I, I did ask the question if there was going to be one driveway designated for ingress and the other one designated, designated for egress, but both driveways are going both ways, so. I think that's about it. All right, did you want to give either the gentleman one on the telephone or here in person? Okay, we have Mr. Reimer here. I don't know if you wanted to add anything. Uh, you did an excellent job summarizing the project. I think you guys are all aware of what's going mm -hmm. on there. This is just one of the final pieces to the puzzle when it comes to zoning and allowing the use of the uh, child care center. And I think the packet was pretty, um, pretty transparent to um, 156 uh, open, 146, uh, 146, uh, 146 yeah. approximately 30 mm -hmm. uh, staff. Okay. I mean, I don't, I, know I don't know if anyone has any questions here from the board. Do we want to ask Cole if you want? Cole, to did you have anything to add? Uh, no, I think you got it all. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. I'd like to say. Can you guys hear me? Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to say I could drag this out for another half hour, but it would be kind of redundant of us to deny <laughs> supporting a conditional use after we supported the rezone, unless they made us a better offer, but <laughs> they haven't. <laughs> would you so, like a motion? Uh, I would say that a motion to approve and send a letter to the RPC would be appropriate. I will um, move that the town board forward a positive recommendation of support for the Door County Community Child Development Center on Gordon Road to establish the child care center in the northeast portion of that person. Right, we have a motion As by presented. Linda, second by? Second. Second by Jeannie. Any further discussion? Anybody have any children? No, okay. Uh, <laughs> I wish. All right, all those in support of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No motion carried. Thank you. Good luck. Appreciate you making the trip up Thank here you. this evening. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Right. Unfortunately, Linda, you, you're on a roll this evening. <laughs> oh, no. Well, it's a good thing I can talk tonight. I, I wasn't doing much talking on Tuesday. <laughs> um, the next item on our agenda is the, the town. This, this came up uh, two months ago. A couple of... Uh, yeah, oh, so I don't know, a couple ago, months ago. But we got wind of a request from the town of Liberty Grove. <laughs> 
to amend the Door County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance to allow for auto repair trade contractor establishments with a conditional use permit in Heartland 10 zoning districts in Door County, which as it turns out, uh, Linda will tell us more, but I think 95% of them are all in Gibraltar versus here. Um, the initial pass uh, on this was we didn't take, we didn't offer an opinion. And since that time, there's been a lot of rethinking of it. And so it's come back to us uh, for consideration as well as other communities in Door County. Linda, would you like to follow on? Uh, right, as the <coughs> chairman mentioned, the plan commission briefly, briefly discussed this a couple months ago, um, but we didn't take any action. So in light of um, the, our, the resource planning, so, okay, back to the beginning. Town of Liberty Grove requested that the county comprehensive zoning ordinance text be amended so that you could have an auto repair, which also includes marine repair, businesses in Heartland 10. Heartland 10 is a 10 acre minimum. Um, the town of Liberty Grove has the majority, like I think 3,000 acres or something like that. Um, we have none in Sevastopol, but that's not to say that someone couldn't come along and, you know, petition to zone, rezone their parcel to Heartland 10. So anyway, the plan commission discussed it. You have our memo in front of you. I won't read the whole thing, but uh, again, just to go back that um, currently in H in Heartland 10, you can have an auto repair or a marine repair or a home business as long as you're residence is there and you live there. So at the plan commission we, level, we kind of thought that, okay, if you live there, you take pride in your residence and appearance and, you know, there wouldn't be an accumulation of vehicles. Whereas having a standalone auto repair or marine repair um, out in a rural area, even though there are, is a conditional use permit requirement, enforcing that conditional use permit is, always, is not always a workable uh, situation. So it went to the RPC. We did not provide any input. It went to the Resource Planning Commission. They supported the zoning text amendment with a vote of four to one. Um, and it went to county board. And there was much, much discussion at county board um, at the December meeting. Again, you have it in the memo. And that resulted in RPC members changing their mind and the county board not making any decision at all and tabling the matter. So it is our plan commission's consensus that we um, provide some input, input either to the RPC or directly to the county board, such as this memo that basically some of the HL10 parcels, because they're grandfathered in, they're not all 10 acre parcels. So you could have an auto business that's maybe only five acres away. Um, and then again, we mentioned the enforcement of conditional use permit conditions. Does our county land use department have the personnel capable of doing that enforcement uh, with more businesses? Um, you know, when it comes to outside storage and lighting and all that, additional burning, burdens on the county. Uh, home business to me infers that the owner operator lives there and this would not this would bypass that um, We also talked about a performance Along the lines of an occupancy bond that if you don't follow through with your conditional use permit uh, Requirements you're going to get a fine or at least notice that you need to comply um, Perhaps the land use needs to tighten up some of their conditional use permit language when it comes to screening and lighting, mm -hmm. things like that. And uh, we disagreed with Liberty Grove's logic that having a home business on Art Heartland 10 would be easy to do because there are not a lot of commercial parcels available in Liberty Grove. And that we kind of threw that by the wayside. That was not a legitimate reason. So anyway. That's where it stands. So um, I guess we're looking uh, for the town board support to forward this memo, either to the RPC or the directly to the county board, uh, to the RPC. I think the plan commission did a great job in, in uh, the, the points they made. Mm -hmm. um, 
I would totally support that. Yeah, it was a really good discussion we had. Yeah. So. Any comments from anyone else on the board? I would entertain a motion that we approve and support this, sending it to the Door County Board of Supervisors, a copy to the RPC as well. <clears throat> and so I think the issues that are raised here are very legitimate. I'd like to say that I wish we'd have caught these the first go round. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you kind of go with the flow when somebody asks for something, you think there's good logic behind it. But I think probably <clears throat> one of the single biggest reasons that we should support this is, was a bullet that was mentioned in there, which is the Resource Planning Commission, not so much the Resource Planning Commission, but Land Use Services has a difficult time following through on conditional uses. And, you know, we could end up with half a dozen of these, and as we know, we have experienced personally, some have taken 10 years to be implemented correctly. So I would recommend that someone issue a motion and we send this off on its merry way. So, hearing a motion from... Derek, you were at the meeting. Yeah, I'll make a motion. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. A motion I'll, by Derek. I'll second the motion. Just say second, second by Linda. I guess it must be a slow night. Uh, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Good. Carried will, I assume our clerk treasurer will put her clerk hat on and take care of this? Absolutely. Oh, all right. <coughs> Thank you, Amy. All right. Great. All right. Next item, a little bit on our financial reports. You have before you your account balances, the budget versus actual, the final year-end statement, as well as the current. And you also have the transactions by date. And what we would like to do is hear if the treasurer, with her voice, does she want to add anything? Sure. We have paid out the January settlements to the county, uh, Sebastopol School, Sturgeon Bay School, NWTC, and the Sebastopol Sanitary District. Our audit will take place on January 30th, 2023, and there will be a primary election on Tuesday, um, February 21st um, for the state Supreme Court. Um, polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Well, you switched hats there. I have to every once in a while. All right. All right. <coughs> Motion to approve the financial reports would be in order. I'll make a motion to approve the December financial reports, December 2022 financial reports. Motion by Jeannie, second by? Second. Second by Mark. All right. <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Next item would be? The approvals of oh, vouchers, claims, and bills. Steve, From December 20th through January 19th. I think everybody had a chance to sign them. They did, yes. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the vouchers, bills, and claims December 20th, 2022 through January 19th, 2022. Three, right. three, 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 three. <laughs> 23. You're right. That is someone yeah, should say. That was, that was me. That was me. Typo. Yep. Good catch, Mark. All right, motion by Mark, second by? I'll second. Second by Jeannie to approve vouchers, claims, and bills December 20th, 2022 through January 19th, 2023. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, oral committee commission reports. I'd like to start doing this quarterly. It's a yeah. kind of just give people a recap rather than us trying to do that just at the annual meeting in April. So with that, Linda, you haven't had a chance to speak to <laughs> Okay. I was going to make one comment on the financials. Are we really earning 4.02% We are at the local government pool? Yes, they've been slowly <coughs> climbing. That was impressive. Right. <laughs> it's about time. Yeah. Okay. It's only Plan. taken two years. Yeah. Plan Commission, um, we've had a lot of activity uh, all of 2022, but I guess I'm supposed to stick to just the last quarter. So I believe we had a zoning change. We had a text amendment. We had this Heartland issue. We had one or two conditional use permits. Uh, again, I'll just thank all of our uh, plan commission members who donate a considerable amount of time to attend these meetings. We really appreciate it. And also, Door County Land Use Services is uh, back offering educational uh, programs for plan commission 
members, um, board, board members to public education um, sessions. So we had one in November and we have our next one in Jan um, January 30th. Quick question on your ordinance update. Do you have a rough timeline and would you try and get that done before license renewals? Oh, the STR ordinance? Yes, I'm sorry. Could I give you um, a topic? Sure, <clears throat> we can do that. Yeah, look, like I said, we've been collecting points that we want to consider. So, I mean, um, I'm, I'm before renewal. Before good renewal point. would be a good time to do okay. it so we don't have to introduce something mm -hmm. midterm. All right, sounds good. Okay, great. Thanks, Linda. Mark? Rick, damn the whole, the whole stuff. Well, unlike Linda, we don't have a lot going on this time of year just because nothing going on over there. But we do have lots going on behind the scenes. Um, Ryan Brungraber is our, I'd say our dam master now. He's been running it for close to a year. Um, he goes down there, tries to go down there once a week. And we're having some issues with water getting through and all kinds of other things and we've been having some pretty good discussions we're gonna have to get down there and do some work probably gonna have to get the DNR involved unfortunately but it is neither here nor there um, we are I've talked with the uh, athletic director over at Sevastopol we've got some good talks going there um, we're gonna at our next meeting she's gonna come and give us her wish list as she does every year um, I'm trying to think the big thing we would really like to do this year, if we can, and it's going to be from donations, is replace the scoreboards. They're very outdated. So if anybody's got some extra money laying around or like to sponsor a scoreboard, come talk to us. Um, just general electrical needs and small things like that. So um, not a whole lot going on in the wintertime around here, but it's the behind the scenes thing that people don't really see us doing. Um couple of things perhaps you can update us on uh, dugout status on the one that didn't get completely knocked over and do we have any um, sense for where we're going to go with the lights I talked to two people about the lights and basically it's once it warms up a little bit we'll meet out there um, same thing with the dugout I have two guys are going to go look at the dugouts they want to wait till it gets warm or the dugout until it warms up a little bit we have a really good plan for that dugout we're going to reface the first base um, baseball dugout so all the dugouts will pretty much look the same um, that one's never had any problems with it with um, like the the third base dugout well, obviously that one fell over so that one we had some major problems we always have problems with cracking the concrete and the block and stuff but the first base one's always been pretty solid so we're going to reface it and just clean it up and make it structurally sound er so we're going to hopefully the next month here and get the guys out there and look at these Kind of waiting for the warmer weather. So do you think that this will get accomplished before the season starts? It'll it'll probably be like last year, probably be during the season. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. EMRs. We have a new EMR chief over here. Derek. Yeah, EMR submitted their Q4 payroll. Uh, of the 20 members, 13 of them responded to calls for that quarter. Uh, the EMR group is actively working on creating a list of inventory items and who has what. Uh, so they're working hard on that. And the rest of the winter into spring, they're going to be working on uh, either bylaws or changing it to standard operating procedures. Oh, oh that'd be great. That'd be cool. Is there a lot of training going on at the present time? Or is that back on the monthly? There's monthly, they're on a regular schedule. They're back on monthly. Yep. Oh, that's good news. And how about headcount? Uh, 20, 21, 22. The EMR that responds to the majority of our calls is actually a Egg Harbor resident. Is he hmm. thinking of moving? I don't think he has to if he's responding that much. So oh. thank you to him. That's encouraging. Who is that individual? Dale Wiegand. Oh, Dale Wiegand. Oh, okay. Dale. He's right on yeah. town line. Yep. Okay. Well, that's great. Thanks, Dale, if you hear this. Okay, great. Uh, Jeannie, you're last but not least on the Communication and Technology Committee. Well, thanks, Chairman. Um, I don't have a lot to say other than we have um, 
as most people should now be aware that there's going to be a public hearing for um, for Barban uh, next Monday, January 23rd at 6 p.m. I encourage um, all the residents in, in the community to um, attend. Um, it will, you'll have a lot of um, information provided to you um, and you will have the opportunity to ask questions and um, really look forward to, to seeing as many people as possible at uh, the upcoming meeting. I would add to that because we were, we will be talking about all the ins and outs yeah. of what we're going to do with broadband, at least where we think we're going. And there will be a very substantial uh, commitment on the part of the town in the multi-million dollar category. So if you have interest, you have questions, the time is to come now and get them answered to your satisfaction or let us work if we can't get the answer corrected. We, we do not want to have a situation where there's a lot of after the fact, oh, I didn't know or I didn't understand. So uh, you got the time. Uh, it will also be broadcast live, correct, Laddie? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So it will be live on our YouTube channel and on our TV station. So if the only catch there is you're, you're not going to be able to raise your hand because we won't be able to see you. But from an informational perspective, it will be there. So hope to see you on the 23rd. Thanks. Ms. Vogel. All right. Well, Thank you, Dan, if you, if you have terrible internet, you're not going to be able to watch, so you better get here. <laughs> that is sort another of, good point. And they're not watching exactly. us now, <laughs> hearing us. Believe we will me. send up a smoke <laughs> signal from the town park just before the start <laughs> yeah, of the meeting. Yeah, I, I, I certainly hope the entire board will be at that meeting as okay. well. Well, they will. Only if you have comfy chairs this time. Okay. <laughs> so, next on our <coughs> list is We'd like to give you an opportunity to share his thoughts with us, whether it be land commission or something else, broadband, you name it, you're on it for everything. Please, share with us your thoughts. Everything but dams, sorry about that, Marcus. I can't help you out there, um, at least not yet. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Board, uh, for the opportunity to give you an update on what's going on at the county board level. <coughs> Um, I sent out to uh, the Madam, Ch uh, Madam Clerk uh, an update from our December 20th meeting. Um, a lot of uh, uh, resolutions, uh, uh, pretty straightforward, that I, I won't go into. Um, the uh, ones that I wanted to, um, uh, to cover, um, you, you talked about the HL10 already, which uh, was a fairly entertaining discussion at the um, county board meeting scene three of my fellow RPC members changed their mind. Um, and um, so it'll be uh, a challenge, which is one of the reasons we discuss it at the Plan Commission, just to, to provide uh, the Plan Commission's um, voice and the town of Sevastopol's voice, especially with the challenges that the town has faced with uh, countryside, condition use permits, and the enforcement. So I appreciate the Plan Commission's uh, work in that regard. Um, the other RPC, uh, or an uh, ordinance uh, that was changed at the county board level was the repeal of chapter 7 of the Door County Code regarding wind energy facility ordinance. Um, as you know, the county had its own ordinance, um, you know, relative to wind energy facilities from um, back in the, uh, the early aughts. And uh, there has been, you know, subsequent work done by the state basically updating uh, their regulations of which our ordinance would have is has been more out of date relative to keeping up with the changes at the state level and uh, much like other uh, chapters uh, that have been updated um, by uh, corporate counsel uh, to reflect uh, changes in state and kind of aligning with state regulations this is another one where we're going to be aligning you know back to state regulations rather than trying to have to keep up with uh, the changing dynamics of how the state manages it so basically rescinding it allows us basically just to uh, align with and just utilize the state regulation. Another one that will be coming up uh, sometime this year is a discussion about uh, repealing um, or uh, the ordinances regarding towers. Um, and uh, one of the challenges is with, with new technologies, you know, whether it's fixed wireless, whether it's 5G where you're talking about them putting uh, antennas on power lines, uh, telephone poles, et cetera. It makes it very challenging to try to stay up to date with that. 
And, and again, there's an existing state statute that, that addresses those newer technologies and towers. And so we'll likely, uh, down the road, um, you know, make changes and repeal that related ordinance as well. So that's something to stay tuned for. I want to highlight some of the um, uh, committee activities as the broadband uh, chair. Um, I was uh, uh, delighted to um, have um, uh, Jeannie Vogel at our, June, our January 11th meeting uh, talk about the work uh, from the great work that the town has, has done, in particular with uh, issuing the request for proposal and, and establishing that as a, as a thorough process. Uh, Jeannie got a lot of kudos from a lot of the uh, stakeholders from other municipalities relative to the thoroughness of the work that uh, Sevastopol has done and basically acknowledging that the, um, the town has probably done the most thorough work of any municipalities that they have seen. So congratulations, Jeannie, uh, on your work there. And uh, to note that uh, a few towns are uh, taking a look and have already utilized our RFP and some of their work, including uh, the village of Egg Harbor. Um, I was uh, not, I was told that uh, today when I was there at the at the hall for a, a different meeting, uh, so it's already again being used and it just uh, builds on top of the shoulders of the work from um, the town of Bailey's Harbor, uh, town of Jacksonport, town of uh, Liberty Grove, uh, 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 Washington Island, uh, with all those municipal municipality stakeholders that have been kind of pioneering the work over the last several years that uh, we were able to rely on and have utilized as part of our county process to share best practices, not reinvent the wheel, leverage the county where we know we can leverage them, and uh, take advantage of that so we can get to where we're at with the uh, public hearing next week. So um, uh, congratulations uh, to the town on their efforts there. Um, Amy Connolly also talked about in the United Way presentation about what they call uh, on, on digital equity or what they call tech equity. Uh, that's going to be one of the things we're going to have to work on, you know, once the town uh, makes a decision on how to proceed forward with broadband. We know there's a lot of folks that are challenged relative to still from a, um, a, a funding and monetary ability to um, have broadband as a, you know, as a required or necessary utility in their homes. And there's several federal programs that can help them get uh, reduce the fees. There's what's called the Affordable uh, Connectivity Program, or ACP, which basically allows uh, residents that um, uh, to apply, and if, and if they um, uh, meet the requirements, they basically get $30 off per month off their uh, uh, their their broadband uh, monthly subscription. And uh, we know that uh, several of the uh, internet service providers that the the town has had discussions with as part of its RFP process also have additional programs, so those are things we'll have to uh, make sure we keep an eye on relative to make sure that uh, broadband access as we work towards that goal, um, we also can um, address the affordability uh, challenge for folks. Because I know that's, that's something that I know the, the town is mindful of, so just something for us to make sure that we can you know, rely and utilize the United Way as a, as a partner uh, in this regard. Um, also, um, we know that the through the town's efforts, putting um, notices in um, in the mail, you know, relative to filling out the broadband survey, it's it's still important to do that, you know, through the FiberNet Door County org site. Um, through the December poll, uh, there has been 472 responses for the town of Sebastopol, so that surpasses <laughs> by about uh, 10 to 20 percent what was done by the original town survey. Um, so. Um, we anticipate as a county to get the latest update from the state in about two weeks, so uh, we expect a substantial increase of that. 472 does not include uh, the uh, no service um, survey responses that were in the town, so we know we'll have, you know, you know, over uh, 100 plus just for our town, you know, relative to, you know, providing that information and adding that onto the state survey. So that, again, that survey is important for everyone to fill out. If you haven't done, done that, uh, please do so, even for folks that are considered served along Bayshore Drive, Glidden Drive, Bark Road, um, South Cape Point uh, Road. Um, <coughs> if you don't have service, it's still important to I, identify yourselves that way because even with a, a letter of support, you can actually be claimed as being not served. And the more non-served residents we have, the 
bigger opportunity is for us to get grant dollars. So uh, this is all survey data that the state has, and so the State Public Service Commission, which basically is going to be the entity that issues grant dollars, we can state these statistics because it's coming out of their database. So it provides incredible uh, uh, amount of credibility relative to for us pleading our case because we're basically regurgitating their data that's in their database. So, um, so I think uh, great work continuing to do that uh, within the town, and um, I think we'll continue to get uh, great visibility relative to the work that we're doing uh, in that regard. So with that, I'd be happy to entertain any questions um, that the town board may have. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think from all of the work that we've done on this RFP and all the other stuff, we are, we, it is our belief that we have about 900 to 1,000 underserved or unserved. About 1,000, oh, slightly over 1,000, wasn't it? Approximately 1,000 uh, under and unserved right. uh, which locations. Represent, which represents the, about half of our which voting is roughly population. Less. <clears throat> yeah, which is about roughly half, yeah, roughly um, um, half of that, half of the, that population. Uh, we're also working on some data in the, with the great assistance of, of uh, our Madam Clerk and also Linda's expertise, uh, noting about the, the lottery and the fact that uh, we're trying to also figure out how many residents versus, um, you know, second homeowners we have because that is also gives us good insights as to adoption rates um, and, um, you know, viability of, uh, especially for, for serving notice, for example, talking to the broadband coordinator today uh, one of the ISPs in the northern part of the county has had a hard time reaching residents um, relative to the fact that they're stringing fiber along their road and, you know, they're going to along a stretch of road where it's mainly, um, you know, folks that it's their summer home or vacation home. And so uh, the vacation homeowner is wondering if they're responding to a survey or some marketing spiel, but it's really a relative to we're going down, you know, we're going down the road if you want to get your your fiber line drop installed, you know, which in, in some cases may be at a reduced or no cost to you at all. You know, those are important things. And just knowing who are part-time residents for us as, as part of that process is going to be important. It'll make um, Amy's life easier, you know, relative to helping uh, a vendor do notifications or helping uh, them do a, uh, a different way of outreach to make sure they can get a hold of, uh, you know, all of our residents, whether they're part-time or whether they're full-time. Can I go back to that, that number? Is that households? A thousand or a thousand? Is that households or locations? Locations. So, locations. so what does that mean? So um, we, as as a way to try to standardize that mark, because you know some of it, uh, we use <coughs> countywide the E nine one one address list. So if you have an address list, um, you know that was kind of our conservative estimate. If I looked at um, the town of Sebastopol, roughly 100 to 150 of those don't have a structure on them. That's okay. You know, future growth, uh, those sorts of things, they can design with that in mind. If someone took the pains of getting an address, they might anticipate building a house, a building, you know, whatever there. So that's based on the number of locations. And then based on that conservative number of locations, um, remember when charter goes down a road, um, the government technically considers everyone yeah. on that area served, whether there's only, you know, one person that signs up for the service um, or nobody, right? And so one of the things that we wanted to fine tune is based on those rough estimates uh, to get a much more granular sense of who really has a connection or, or, or who has um, no connection at all. And so that's, that's why we looked at those numbers conservatively and then um, yeah. as part of our RFP process, um, the, the four respondents came in with their own numbers. Yeah. So it was helpful for us to kind of know what we thought was that were underserved or unserved so that when they would say, you know, you have <coughs> only 400 unserved or underserved, we could say, you know, wait a minute, that's, that's crazy. You know, yeah, that number you said, actually, if you think about that, it's pretty conservative. I mean, because the the we have 2300 residents right well, roughly 20, well, voting 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 but, you know what yeah. i mean so we use and we have take, you know 
you know, divide that by two if you have couples. You know what I mean? You can't. Oh, well, we used a twenty-one sixty-five, I yeah. think, location. That and that's where we look at the, the 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 tax lottery because those are actual you know mm -hmm. dwellings, right? That that's yeah. that that's a full-time residence. So that's one. And our other source of data, Mark, is we went to the twenty twenty census. And so that gives us uh, a number of how many households there are in the town because, again, it's not only just the residents, right? There's folks that live in apartment buildings, yeah. you know, those sorts of things. So we, we've got to, we have to make sure we can capture that as well. So that's, that's awesome. so. So that's we're awesome. going. We got all those numbers. We're, we're for triangulating, that, you know, two or three different ways. Again, not to necessarily believe the numbers, but to give us the ability to ask, you know, questions so that we can make sure we're as close yep. and accurate as possible. Great job. But Charter, for the first time, through the RFP process, came back to us with their served, underserved, which, if I had a dollar for every time we'd asked for that information over the yeah. course of the last mm -hmm. 15 years, I'd be a millionaire. Uh, so yes. it was an interesting perspective and helped validate the numbers. So yeah. that's, that's the good news. So. Right. Well, thanks, so, you. Yeah, so, and again, just to reiterate what um, uh, Supervisor Vogel said, we encourage all the residents to attend the uh, public hearing uh, next week at 6 o'clock on the, on the 23rd. Uh, and um, and as, as part of this process, just to reassure the, the residents that we uh, utilized um, both the survey feedback they did from the town survey as well as what they provided as part of the fibernet.org uh, survey that we had sent out. So that information has been very helpful in us to uh, determine a potential route going forward. So thank you everybody for your participation. Good, thanks again, you. Appreciate that. Okay, going back into our packet here. Um, you do have a copy of the, the name escapes in the Door County Inspections report for the month. And I can tell based on the construction going around me that he's a busy guy. Plus, there's some holes that they can't even cover. I mean, so apparently there's a backlog of work. Um, as we move on to correspondence, well, there's someone on my left I, I wanted to recognize. Who, Linda's at it again. Who managed to make the Reader's Digest issue. Well, she's a published author. Uh, who, who wrote a comment into Reader's Digest with respect to short-term rentals. And uh, I, well, I put it in here for two reasons. One, I wanted to acknowledge the fact that she is a published writer. And also the fact that I, she supported and has, you know, makes good sense with respect to how Airbnb and VRBOs, the impact they have on our residential areas. So it's, uh, I won't bother to read it, but I gave, give her credit for taking the time to share her, her thoughts because this is obviously an ongoing concern of everybody in the community. Uh, <coughs> Dan, you didn't mention that we're in there at where, oh, where? You oh, yeah, we're aware. That. No, okay. we're aware, aware. Our, our, our old road, which I think had they taken this picture 20 years ago before they flattened it, if you recall, this yeah, road was, very they, they decreased the amount of kills in it and they widened it. Yeah, it used to be really interesting. Uh, another item in your packet in correspondence is we received. Could, could I comment on Sure. It? you want to comment on your article? I, I, I don't please? know if anybody except me reads the Reader's Digest anymore. <laughs> in a brief history lesson, Airbnb literally started with two fellows in San Francisco. There was a shortage of rooms. They had some air mattresses, put them on the floor of their home, and called it an air bed and started charging for it, and it's now a $100 billion company, Airbnb. Um, yeah, that was a response to an article that appeared in Reader's Digest last summer extolling the virtues of Airbnb. So naturally, I had to respond. My original response to them was 250 words. They cut it down to about 25. But yeah. anyway. Okay, you insist on it? So here's your response. Oh, it says, so you're gonna read it. Your Airbnb facts from August didn't mention the negative impacts on residential areas. My low-key, friendly subdivision was never meant to be a destination for short-term rentals. It is totally the opposite of what attracted me in the first place. So now you have it. There's no secrets there anymore. All right, thank you. Her pen name, her pen name, LW. LW. Yes, LLW. All right. Um, in your packet is a notice from Dor Destination Door County that they sent us some cash. 
This is that whole talk track regarding the pickleball and the loans and all that good stuff. So, I have a question on that too. You have a question? I know you, that we're all anxious to get home. That's okay. But um, in Julie's letter, Julie Gilbert from Destination Door County, um, it said that one example of an appropriate expenditure would be other facilities that are open for public use by residents and visitors. Would the town hall fall under that? Yeah, but we don't like, have a bill. <clears throat> No, but say our audio system that we want to improve. Oh. So that would be that facilities could, could, open for public enough. use. Hmm. Right? Good point. Yeah, that could be. I didn't think so. I'll take that out of my packet and follow up on that. Just so, a thought. At any rate, um, so you see what we receive from them, and in future years it's going to go up a little bit from where we were at. I don't know where the echo's coming from. So okay. All right. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading my own note to myself here, which is, <laughs> <laughs> which is, I'm looking for any concerns that might be out there with relative to intersections, mm -hmm. where due to the growth of vines, tree limbs, or brush are blocking your ability to see a stop sign or it's a sign that might be a turn or low speed or whatever. So from the board's perspective, anybody that has them, please send them in to Amy so we can get them off to the county. They're going to go out and clean those up. And if there's anybody listening that has a concern about an intersection near their house, feel free to call our town clerk and give her that location, and we'll have that cleaned up. And you also have a copy of the Sturgeon Bay Fire Report, the <coughs> payment notice, which I believe Amy covered. And... In the packet, you also have some correspondence from the DNR <clears throat> to the Mitskis regarding uh, placement of a structure in the bay opposite of the property. And got so many pages here tonight. And that is everything in the way of correspondence. So going down to announcements, I mean, you'd be really surprised if I suggested you came to a public hearing on broadband on Monday, January 23rd at 6 p.m. That, that way we can justify having everybody here to, to film it, get your input. And our next Board of Supervisors meeting will be February 20th at 7 p.m. So, which leaves us with a motion to adjourn if someone would like to do that. I'd like to make that motion to adjourn. You would? Yes. Second. We didn't have to argue over that one at all. No. Thanks. Motion by Derek, second by Mark to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.